It is great to see you, man. Because the last time we did our interview was last year at uh, City Hall. That's right, right in front of the Toronto sign. I remember it well. People don't really talk too much about it, and they should. You have the best music videos ever. So something like that should happen. And talk about what, I, what I'm saying about the creativity of your videos. Talk a little bit about it, please. All right, so a lot of people know me for these crazy videos, right? So the first one was Found, which became a gold single in Canada. And that one, we just basically, all we did was we rented mascot costumes. And that was the plan. We had no other plan. And uh, we dressed up our friends like a bunch of morons. And, you know, top 20 on CMT right away. Second video. Second video. We go to Japan. We dress me up like a combination of Elton John and John Wayne. Plot me in the middle of Tokyo and just make people feel weird. And... That was a huge success. Again, top 20 CMT. And the third one, uh, we decided we would do something a little different. So I basically, I bought about $500 worth of cardboard and I turned my own garage into the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. My wife, not impressed. But, and then uh, coming up, actually I got a new one for you. We're, we're gonna be filming in July. So that means not just a new video, that means a new song. New song too, yeah. So. Recently, I came across a bunch of line dancing videos, apparently found in Bar Murder, massive on the European line dancing circuit. Like there's like 200 people dancing in the street to these songs, right? So what I did is I contacted about five different countries line dance choreographers. We set up a European line dance tour that we're going to shoot on this next video. So wait, but what's the, what's the new track? Well, there's there's two that we're going between right now, so I can't I can't reveal it quite yet. Okay, well look, you're here for a reason. This is the inside the song. Um, it's basically you talking to a lot of folks who want to know about the business because it is about writing a great song. But what do you do after you write this great song? Well, luckily, I, I have a really solid team here in Toronto. It's uh, my publishers here, my producers here, my publicists here. Uh, so basically, what what I try and do is once we have a song that we feel is great. We try and, and set up a release that we feel like is going to get to people. We want to we wanna make sure that we don't just have a great song that just sits on the shelf and only my mom tweets me and thinks it's cool, which happens all the time, by the way. Uh, but we want to make sure people are hearing it. So I try to time it with playing live, getting out on tour, doing videos like this crazy grown-up moron kid thing that I do. and. Uh, you know, just, just figuring out a way to make, make noise about it. And uh, that's a lot of fun, and that's why I love my job. How tough was it for you in the beginning? I mean, you're writing these great songs, but to get that team together, what was that like for you? Well, I've been doing this for a long time. I've only been doing country about two years, but I've, I've been in the business for about 13 years. And uh, so I've, I've collected a group of people that I consider my family, essentially, uh, with Jeff Dalzio Production, uh, Red Brick Songs, my publisher, Bill Miller's my radio promoter, Tiffany Astell is, is my, my, uh, my, pub, uh, my publicist, and uh, it just there's like a real collection of people. Louie O'Reilly, my manager, they just, they just feel like they're my friends, they're people I can trust, and it's not like this, this big scary company sitting at a desk, suit and tie kind of thing. It's just people I trust that I love that are around me that we try and make something great together, and, and it's, uh, it feels at home and it works. Why did you make that transition from uh, rock to country? Well, you know, I've been doing raw for a long time, and it was it was uh, it was a bit of a grind, and um, I loved it. I learned so much. I learned how to be an independent musician and to compete with the majors. And uh, but you know, radio was in a hard spot. Our band was not quite fitting into the industry. There was less bands to tour with, and I just started seeing a real opportunity for my songwriting to grow in a way that was more country friendly. And I was gonna, and I'm gonna jump in because again, I've said this, and not knocking other genres. But to me, hip hop and country music are the best storytellers when it comes to music. Totally. And you know what? Like, you, there's different lenses you can view things in. For me, like, I look at country music, and you can look at a relative of country music, bluegrass. And for me, that's like, that's the punk rock of country. It's fast, it's crazy. And then country music's like, like the rock of that comparison. But hip hop's the same way, man. There's, 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 there's more aggressive underground stuff, and there's more mainstream stuff. But I, I feel like when people are looking to have a voice and to, to try and connect with people, country music is a very powerful genre because it, it like I, for, for what I love about it, it connects people on a, on the things that we take for granted in life, like good times and family and love and partying. And you know, it's just I, I, that's what I love about country music. So it sounds like you've really grown as an artist since you've been in the country genre. 
Yeah, you know, I feel like I, I've started to discover what I love about this business and what I love about songwriting and, and how my stuff fits. And uh, yeah, it's really satisfying because I've been doing this a long time. So it's nice to have that new life, new breath. When are you going to get like some kind of massive budget where you could turn around and you can like have this huge video kind of thing where you can do whatever the hell you want? Well, you know, I, I remember a video very specifically from my childhood, watching Axl Rose jump off an aircraft carrier and swimming with dolphins. I don't think that's in the cards for me, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I can make a great video for a thousand bucks if I have to, and, and uh, for me, it's just like a great song. As long as you have something cool and interesting to say, or to watch, then that's all, all it takes. It's all about content. Okay, so when's the new music coming out? This summer, we're going to have a new single, single out. Yeah. And you said new video. What about any uh, tours? I mean, there are a lot of festivals going on. You can be involved with that? Yeah, I just got off the road for 36 shows with Brett Kissel across Canada. And uh, we're just about to announce the, the part two of this tour, which will probably involve uh, what I'm guessing is a lot of East Coast shows this fall. So check it out. Yeah. Website, Twitter, all that stuff. Where to go to follow you? Pretty much social media is everything at It's Dan Davidson, and uh, the website is uh, dandavidsonmusic.com. Fantastic, my friend. Thanks, Great talking to you. We got to make sure we talk again when that new single comes out. Can't wait. Let's do it.